Well, hey guys, Kaylee here and welcome back to the Honeystead. Mom and I are up in the apiary checking on a few of the hives, seeing if they need a little bit or they don't need a little bit. It's been about two weeks since we did our last big inspection on all the colonies. And that's one question that I get asked quite often is, how often do you inspect your colonies? And the answer is sometimes two weeks, sometimes longer, sometimes sooner. It really just depends on how things go here on the farm. Um, but for the most part, there are four colonies that we need to look at. We had four nukes that we did not sell um, from our, our nuke making adventures this year, which, oh no, how many nukes did we sell? Uh, like 20? I think so. I think we had, yeah, I think it was about 20 nukes that we sold. Um, to all locals, um, some viewers, which I thought was actually really exciting. Uh, but yeah, we sold a good bit of nukes this year. We did have a question from one of the viewers because I said I was up to 30 colonies. Um, we would have had a lot more, but right now 30 is what we have. Um, and that's mainly because we really, really sold a lot of nukes this year to be able to buy the equipment um, to be able to grow more bees for next year. So if we have, if we didn't, we would definitely have been up to 50 colonies, uh, but you do have to sell some to be able to, to continue to grow. Uh, so for the most part, everyone that bought nukes from us, I've heard really good things, pretty excited about that. Our girls are healthy and they're loving it. They're enjoying, they're enjoying just being bees. Did you get breakfast? <laughs> Look, some of them, I gotta come up here and split yeah, some of these. Those. Look, those are the ones we gotta take. I know, I know. Some of these are already like popped open, ready to go. Mm. Right here. That one's my favorite. This is typical. Half a glove, half gloved. Oh. You're going to need it with your veil on. I've done that before. I've drank water with my veil on. Yep. I've done, purposely done that before. You know what? One of our viewers sent us over those camel packs. I should have gotten those today. The water packs, the water buffaloes. Oh, oh look at these. So good. Did mm. you do this one? Or was that like that? Mm. So good. All right. We got to do these bees. So we still don't have enough equipment to do what we want to do. Yes, we do. <laughs> we have enough equipment. Hello, little ladies. Oh, I think these girls are going to be ready. Look at them poking out like, what you doing? Hi. Let's see if you guys need some extra space. What's that one look like? I mean, it wasn't long ago that we gave them more, so if they don't need extra space quite yet, it's okay not to not to give it to them. Yeah, these girls are working really nice. In one of my previous videos, I talked about the 80-20 rule of thumb when it comes to adding uh, any extra box to your colony. I won't add an extra box if only a few frames are drawn out um, because that that won't allow the bees to actually focus on where the work is. They're gonna actually move up if you give it to them sooner. Since this colony is a 10 frame, what we do is around when eight of those frames are actually nice and drawn out, looking good, looking filled, packed with pollen, that's when we think about, okay, we're gonna go ahead and start adding on another box. Sometimes I'll also take the outside frames and put them just one over, as long as there's not any brood. I'd never wanna break up the brood pattern, but I have noticed that sometimes the outside frames, they don't always work on. So you can manipulate them just enough to be able to actually work on the outside frames um, by moving that one over if they're not really doing that much to it. So 80-20, that's our rule that we kind of follow. That's when we go ahead and add another box up on top, whether it's another deep, or even a honey super. For the most part, the bees are gonna tell you what they need. 
if they only have a couple of frames drawn out and then you add another box up on top of that, they're gonna go straight up on top and then start focusing on those frames and pretty much disregard the other frames in the bottom. And one of the problems that you could have when you face that, you've now opened up their space and they have to defend that entire area. So you do wanna be mindful of that uh, because there are some opportunistic pests that can come in when a colony is too small and can't defend their entire area. So they're starting to draw out all that nice fresh white comb. They're doing good. So this one has been about, has it been two weeks since I inspected these? I gotta look. Look at that brood. Beautiful brood right in the middle. And got honey, you got nectar and honey right up on top. See that brood right in the middle? And it's definitely typical. You're gonna see brood, then you're gonna see new egg, packed pollen, nectar, larva, and then honey on the outside. So can you see that? On the back side, they're working away, filling it with nectar. Wow. Definitely happy about this one for sure. Oh my goodness. Look at this pollen. They found something red. I have to show this. Come here for a second. Look at that pollen. Do you see that? The red? Oh yeah, it's pink. It's be Look at that beautiful pollen colored. Isn't it gorgeous? So what I need to go do is I need to look at my chart and see what makes that color. What, what do we have that's blooming in our area that makes that color? That's one thing that I do wanna work on. I wanna get a little bit better at knowing the different shades like I know that blackberry when blackberries in bloom they have a really pretty gray you know just a gray colored pollen but I am not sure what what brings the purple pollen so if anybody knows feel free but in the meantime I'm gonna have to do some research myself isn't it pretty absolutely a very pretty frame for sure and let's see if I can find the queen. But I see a brand new egg, healthy looking larva. No holes inside the brood. So that's what we look for. Any signs of varroa mite damage. We'll be doing mite checks here very soon. I do have a lot of you that are actually curious on how we do our varroa mite check. So we'll share that. And then also, um, if we do a treatment, what do we do? And I'll share that as well. Still more of that purple pollen. I wonder, I gotta look. Now I'm puzzled. Gosh, it's gorgeous. The only thing I can think of is Maybe the bellflower? Kind of what I'm thinking. I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you have a idea on what possibly, what possibly could have made that really pretty purple pollen? I think this one is gonna be a nice honey frame. Look at all that. That is gorgeous. Hmm. <sighs>
right, last frame. So I'm thinking I'm gonna go ahead and add a box to that this colony. I'm not gonna break up the pattern. They are really doing great. Look at all that fresh, fresh, fresh drawn out calm and they're already starting to fill it up with nectar that they're gonna eventually fan away, get all that moisture out and turn it into honey. And then cap it off and store it for later. See that big boy? See if you find him. Look at him. He's a big blonde boy right there. Compared to the females, all the workers. All right, so I did not see the queen in here. I'm good. I don't need to see her. She is doing her thing. Happy as can be. I just love when we get to add an extra box onto the girls. It's like you know that they're doing a good job. They're, they're growing, they're doing exactly what they're supposed to do. Um, I have about three more. My mom came in and I think she inspected these, so I gotta ask her what her, uh, what her opinion is. But it is like over 100 degrees, I feel like, and um, I still have some work to do, so. Thank you guys for watching, and uh, as always, don't be afraid to get your hands dirty and learn something old.